Good evening.
students, just give me a few seconds. Um, the login credentials that Margaret used originally is not working. So Dr. Malcolm is assisting me, okay? So just give me another five minutes or so to sort it out. All right, and she, I want her to finish up what she started. And I'm sure more persons will be will be sharing and getting some feedback from her. I'm going to make about two or so persons co-host as well. All right, while we're trying to get Margaret in, are there any questions, queries? I know some persons were um, asked to. Some persons were asked to um, Just give me one sec. Um, 
Let me see if this is the email that is supposed to. Oh yes, so persons were asking about the saying that they're not seeing the, I'm not sure if it's this, you saw that I shared something about you enrolling in the information literacy and APA course. And persons were asked, I don't remember if it's this class or the other class, because I have two different groups. Yeah, yeah. Um, saying that they're not seeing it on their timetable and they are saying all kinds of stuff. People, it's a part of your academic development, all right? I've taught you APA. This is something that you will get five marks for in my course. Once you do it and I see your badge, you will get free, five free marks. So if you want the free marks, you will do it. All right, and um, I will be checking for completion on November 24. All right, on November 24. Mr. Clark, good night. Uh, good evening. I, I'm just I'm joining your class. Please. Was there an assignment given? All right, just hold on, because if you're just joining the class, you're coming at a, at a very difficult point. I will share the WhatsApp group link as well as the um, where you can get the recordings. Students have been doing some amount of work, um, so you have to hold on because you actually have a guest lecturer and I'm trying to get her into okay. the class. So just look in the chat. I'm going to share two things that I want you to join the WhatsApp group as well as subscribe, okay? All right, so here it is. Uh, All right, let me tell Margaret that it's there. Is there any group with two persons? Can somebody say hi in the WhatsApp group for me, please? Sorry, no, I'm still not in a group. Uh, are you new to the class? I came last week. Okay, all right, hold on, that's what sorry to hold. Okay. Oh, yes, I remember you. Um, all right, so subscribe for me to the YouTube channel. The person who is new and let me did somebody say hi in the whatsapp group i don't remember seeing it did somebody say hi okay somebody said hey thank you yes, very much yes champion champion wow what a name as well as georgia please remember that in an academic environment you try to use no not that's not what i want you try to use certain appropriate names all right uh, okay, so subscribe for me as well as join the WhatsApp group. I Margaret should be joining us any minute. No, let me just call her. All right, is there any group with two persons? Let me see if Margaret is in the class. I don't think she has joined us yet. Any group with only two persons? No, all right. Can you put back that, um, the, the chat thing you're saying? Can you put that up for me, please? I'm not understanding. Uh, you put up something in the chat a while ago, but I didn't get it. I didn't get to see it properly because I took it home back. WhatsApp I, group that you say you're supposed to... Um, it's in the chat still. To join? It is in. The, it is still in the chat. Okay. You, should, you can't delete from the chat. Okay. Um, she's saying she's waiting to, to be let in. How is that possible? Did I claim host? I think I did. Yes, I did. Because I made people co-host. How is she waiting to be admitted? That's not possible.
All right. Good evening, everybody. Good evening again. Um, Miss Newman, you are in, right? Miss Newman, are you in? You need to unmute. Um, Margaret, you're in the class, you know, you just need to unmute. Yeah, you haven't unmuted your mic. Okay, I'm trying to turn off the, 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 the WhatsApp so that we don't hear you. Right, uh, you can just turn off the, I can turn it off. Are you, okay. are you? Turn off the WhatsApp, right. Okay, okay. all right. So good evening, everybody. Um, Miss Margaret Newman again from UA. I don't need to reintroduce her because she was here on Monday and she's just going to continue with what she was doing. Um, I, I apologize for the delay in terms of start, but we had some technical difficulties that we were sorting out. All right, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Miss Newman. Okay. Go ahead. All right, well, um, it's nice to be back. We don't have a lot of slides left, so we're going to start up where we left off, which is a tiny bit of review. Okay, so I'm going to square, share a screen here. And let me see. Where did it disappear? To? I worked on it before I came here. Okay. There it is. Okay, you can see that. Let me see. Yes. And then you go to uh, slideshow and do all I'm of that. Trying, yeah, but it, it, it's funny. With you, your guys do it different slideshow okay there we go should so okay and we want to start right from current slide right yes. okay got it okay so i just wanted you in case you want to write down these questions because they're very useful so if you could just um, have a piece of paper there um you can just write down a good topic sentence implies a question for example in what ways for what reasons by what means, to what extent, under what conditions, and with what results. So they, I'm sure you can add questions to them, but I find these questions very reasonable. And what we were left off last week on Monday was to actually look at examples from you of your sentence outline of one of your topic sentences. So we're just going to look at the, the topic sentences. Okay, so topic sentences. Uh, uh, what they do is they um, help, they write effective paragraphs because these paragraphs need to be unified. So your topic sentence has to give a clear idea of what that paragraph is going to be about. And you can't just have a few, you know, generalized statements because then it will not be well developed. But you can't just have lots of information. It has to have, or generalized ideas, you have to have concrete ideas and they have to work together. So we're going to look at some examples, okay? All right, um, so in a unified paragraph, all sentences directly support the topic, add new information, okay? Irrelevant details destroy clarity and distract the reader. Okay, so let's look at this one. I think this is where we ended. And we looked at this one and saw that for topic sentences, this is not the finished paragraph, okay? But it gives you three ideas that, the, that comes directly from the topic sentence that can develop this paragraph. So the topic sentence says also, software applications afford teachers the opportunity to improve their administrative competencies so as to meet expectations in the education system, varied learner needs, and the society at large. Now, in my opinion, that could be the thesis statement for a very well-developed essay, but that's what, that's what they're saying, that a topic sentence and a thesis statement have many similarities. It just depends on how much information and how much development you give to make the difference. Okay, so they have three points. Efficiency in preparing handouts, tests, lesson points, and reports can be achieved through using word processing applications. And as I pointed out, now you have to develop that. That's a claim, and you have to give some evidence. And evidence sometimes is, can be examples. Sometimes it's facts, sometimes it's details, sometimes it could be, I mean, in social sciences, sometimes it's even a chart that you then um, explain. Then the second one says Microsoft Excel allows for accurate calculation of numbers, enabling teachers to make, to better measure, rank, and assess students' performance. 
And once again, they would have to give some kind of evidence, maybe through examples of how this can work. And three, it says database management can help teachers to store critical information, such as parents' names, addresses, and telephone numbers. That seems rather self, you know, self-explanatory, but it's to answer the question, the society at large, why would it be important for, you know, for the teachers to have this? Okay. So that could be a very well developed paragraph. The the this the outline of the paragraph fits the topic sentence. But let's look at this one. It says African words survive within the structure and syntax of the Creole and Garanagu languages. The, the, this, this thesis statement was trying to show that there were a lot of retentions from Africa in the West Indian languages. And they particularly looked at, I think, Belize and uh, the, the Creole languages in Belize. But if you look at the topic, the, the, the topic sentence, it says African words survived within the structure and syntax of the Creole and Gar I don't know how to pronounce it, Garanagu language. So the first one says African words such as tata and guzu among the Creole and Garan Garanago in Belize provide proof of the survival of African language. And you can see that that's a direct example to give evidence to the sentence above it. Now look at the next sentence. It's, it says Belizean Creole's grammatical structure syntax is African. Now, how does that fit in with the topic sentence? What, what is the main idea of the topic sentence? It says African words survived within the structure and syntax of Creole, right? It doesn't, it's not proving that the Creole or grammatical structure of the Belizean Creole is African. So there's something wrong. Either they have to change the, the topic sentence and say that there are African retentions in the words, and in the structure of the Creole and Garanagu language. Can you see that? I mean, I know I can't hear you, but I'm just asking you. So you can see that the second sentence is not unified. It doesn't connect directly to the, to the topic sentence. It has changed direction. Then it says the Creole language is filled with African-based onomatopoeia. Now that goes with kind of with words. So that the, the third one could go after number one, sentence number one, because they're both definite examples of words that are still existing in the Creole language that come directly from Africa. So one and three would fit the topic sentence. Then we look at four, it says the Garanago language shows elements of both African and Native American influence. Once again, that is more general than the topic sentence, okay? You can't do that. You can't have sentences in your paragraph that is more general than the topic sentence. The topic sentence has to be a general claim with specific ideas in it to show you what the paragraph is going to be about. So as a topic sentence, it's not bad, but I think what makes it difficult, it says that the words have survived within the structure and syntax. That's a lot of information to give unless um, maybe the, the, another paragraph had been about the structure of the structure and syntax of Creole and Garanago um, language, okay, then maybe. But from, from my point of view, we're just reading it, I don't see the cohesion or the unity of the information that is supposed to go into that one paragraph, okay? Some of it is too broad. And um, one of them is, is introducing something that um, when really the topic is supposed to be about the words, okay? So let's go on to the next one. This one says definitely that this paragraph does lack unity. So um, I'm going to see if I can see you guys, participants. So I would like you to read this and see if anybody can tell me which one of those sentences don't belong to that paragraph. So it says much of the violence we see in the world today may be caused by the emphasis on violence in the media. So just look at that topic sentence. What is that paragraph supposed to be about, okay? More often than not, the front page of the local newspaper contains stories involving violence. In fact, one recent issue of my local newspaper contains seven references to violent acts. There is also violence in public school systems. Television reporters frequently hasten to crime and accident scenes and film every grim 
violent detail. The other day, there was a drive-by shooting downtown. If the media were a little more careful about the ways in which they glamorize violence, there might be less violence in the world today and children would be less influenced by it. Now, is there anybody going to volunteer um, which one of the sentence or sentences they think don't belong? The other day, there was a drive-by shooting downtown. Very good. And is there any other one? There is also violence in public schools. Yes, very good. It's Yes, it, it's not about violence in public schools. It's about violence on the media. Very mm -hmm. good. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right. Okay, so here's another example. This one is a different kind. It's about, once again, irrelevant details. When I was growing up, one of the places I enjoyed most was a cherry tree in the backyard. Behind the yard was an alley and then more houses. Every summer when the cherries began to ripen, I used to spend hours, oh, there's a spelling error there, hours high in the tree, picking and eating the sweet sun warm cherries. My mother always worried about my falling out of the tree, but I never did. But I had some competition for the cherries, flocks of birds that enjoyed them as much as I did and would perch all over the tree, devouring the fruit when I wasn't there. I used to wonder why the grown-ups never ate any of the cherries, but actually, when the birds and I had finished, there weren't many left. Okay, are there any sentences or sentences? Behind the yard was an alley and then more houses. Good. Is there any others? Are there any others that maybe shouldn't be there that are not about cherries? I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking that maybe my no. mother always worried about my falling out of the tree, but I never did. No, maybe no, we no, could no. say that it has nothing to do with cherries, but it is about her climbing the tree. Wait, so I, right. Okay, somebody um, needs to mute. Yeah, somebody needs to mute there. Um, right. So I think my mother always worried. You could, we could argue or discuss it. Some people might say it's an interesting fact about her climbing the tree. Um, some people could say, well, there's nothing about cherries in it, but uh, that to me is debatable. All right, so let's see. Mm -hmm. You'd like it to remain, okay. It's, it adds the interest to the story. It makes it more come alive because it's a personal reflection. I can, I can buy that. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the next one. I don't know why. Okay. Another one, shift in focus this time. It is a fact that capital punishment is not a deterrent to crime. Statistics show that in states with capital punishment, murder rates are the same or almost the same as in states without capital punishment. It is also true that it is more expensive to put a person on death row than in life imprisonment because of the cost of maximum security. Unfortunately, capital punishment has been used unjustly. Statistics show that every execution is of a man and that nine out of 10 are black. So prejudice shows right mm -hmm. through. Okay, <laughs> anybody want to comment on what's wrong with this one? How many of the sentences actually deal with um, the topic? In and fact, three is out. It is also true that- Yeah. Um, that that at about expense, so that out. That's out. Good. Mm -hmm. What it says in, it is a five, five two five, five to right? Yes. Five and six. And okay. Six. And what about four? Right. Does what four have anything to do with capital punishment not being a deterrent? It says it has been used unjustly. That's another issue, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So really, only. Two backs up the first. The person got all excited about capital punishment, but they put a whole bunch of ideas about capital punishment and didn't stay on focus. And when we're writing and doing research, the first draft can sometimes look like this. But it, it's interesting because it shows that this person has a lot of ideas and they could probably write different um, paragraphs. They could probably write about the expense of capital punishment, which is a different issue, um, that it's used unjustly. You know, that is prejudicial. Okay, all right, let's go on. 
All right, so here's the example of the first one, okay? I mean, the, the one we just before. The punishment of criminals has always been a problem for society. Citizens have had to decide whether offenders such as first degree murderers should be killed in a gas chamber, imprisoned for life, or rehabilitated and given a second chance in society. Many citizens argue that serious criminals should be executed. They believe that killing criminals will set an example for others and also rid society of a cumbersome burden. Other citizens say that no one has the right to take a life and that capital punishment is not a deterrent to crime. They believe that society as well as the criminal is responsible for the crimes and that killing the criminal does not solve the problems of either society or the criminal. So everything is about the, you know, the, the problem it causes. And it, to me, that has so many ideas that I could see that paragraph, which I think is unified, could lead to other paragraphs picking up on some of the ideas, you know, like it says, um, they have this, this, this problem of deciding, so they argue that um, they should be, okay, that they should be executed, or they should be given a second chance, or no one has the right to take a life, okay? That society as well as criminals are responsible. You can see that all of those ideas make the punishment of criminals a problem for society. And you could see how you could pick up on each of those ideas and create an essay or more um, ideas for the essay. Okay, all right. So one of the things we're learning is that when you're developing a unified paragraph, it can't just have a strong topic sentence. It also has to have specific support. Okay, you can't just, and so I'm going to give you, and so one of the ways uh, we use is a shorthand called topic. It has to have a good topic, but it also has to have evidence or, and the evidence can stand for evidence, experience, and or examples, because de depending, okay, you, you notice a cherry tree one that had experience, right? Um, other ones had evidence or examples, analysis, explanation, and discussion. Not every paragraph is going to be full of discussion. Sometimes you, you give the evidence and then there's, you have to go into the second paragraph to do more analysis, but the analysis often starts in the one set. So I'm going to give you an example of weak T, an underdeveloped paragraph, okay? The cockroach lore that has been daunting us for years is mostly true. Almost every tale we have heard about cockroaches is correct. The stories of cockroaches have frightened people for generations. Would anybody like to comment on what they see there? Besides it being a short paragraph. Um, the, the sentence about tail, like almost mm -hmm. every tail we <laughs> heard about cockroaches is correct. Like, you are so right. The each be right in facts, not yes, about tails. yes. They, it, but they, this person has a beautiful vocabulary and has lovely sentence structure. But what this person has managed to do is say the see this exactly the same thing almost in every sentence. You are right. Cockroach lore, every tale, stories about cockroaches. So the subject of every sentence is the same. Has been daunting us for years. We have heard about cockroaches. Um, have frightened people for, you can see that, maybe they're not exactly, but this person doesn't have any evidence. So they've just repeated themselves. And my experience has been that some of my students were wonderful writers. They had wonderful sentence structure but they never gave me any evidence. So now we're going to look at this same topic sentence and see what it looks when it's well-developed. Come on, why does... Okay. The cockroach lore that has been daunting us for years is mostly true. Roaches can live for 20 days without food, 14 days without water. They can flatten their bodies and crawl through a crack sooner than a dime. They can eat huge doses of carcinogens and still die of old age. They can even survive as much radiation as an oak tree can, says William Bell, the University of Kansas entomologist, whose cockroaches appeared in the movie the day after. They will eat almost anything, regular food, leather, glue, hair, paper, even the starch in book bindings. 
the New York Public Library has quite a cockroach problem. They sense the slightest breeze and they can react and start running in 0.05 seconds. They can also remain motionless for days. And if all this isn't creepy enough, they can fly too. Okay, can you give me some, ex can you name some of the different types of evidence or support um, this person has used for their topic sentence? Uh, with William Bell. Okay, they, they quote it from an expert, right? They, yes, very good. They, they have a direct quote, they incorporated it in the sentence, they named the person, and they told us he was an entomologist, so he's an expert, and even the name the University of Kansas. Very good. Anything else? The movie, the day after. Yes, that's, that's sort of a, a thing of interest, showing us that maybe people have watched that movie. But even if they didn't say movie, the fact that he's a, an entomologist and uh, about cockroaches. Well, well, I guess it is cockroaches appeared in a movie is a pretty good idea. Anything and else? The, the state of the New York Public Library. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. And you put it in square brackets. So they're recognizing that it's, you know, it can be there, but it's really interesting. We'll never forget that one. Anything else? Are there any statistics or numbers? Um, 0 0.05 seconds, how fast they move. Yes. Anything else? The fact that they can fly. Yes. Look at the very top of the paragraph. How long can they live without food? 20 days. Wow. And without water, 14 days. 14 days. Right. Now, the one problem I would have with this paragraph um, is that um, you, are, you couldn't write a paragraph like this without um, citing your sources. So if you were to make a statement that roaches can live for 20 days without food and 14 days without water, if that came from the same source, you'd have to put um, parentheses after water, the name of the author and the page number, and the year and the page number if you were doing APA, okay? And if you and if you had if you said that they can eat huge doses of carcinogens and still die of old age, you'd have to have evidence for that too. Now the fact that you you don't always have to name the person, like say William Bell, but in APA you'd have to put uh, parentheses. Oh no, that's it. Yeah, parentheses after old age and name the author, the year, and the page number. Okay. Um, even like the New York Public Library has quite a cockroach problem, you'd have to cite your source where you got that. And you'd at least have to cite your source for 0 0.05 seconds and that they can remain motionless for days. We all know that cockroaches can fly, so we don't need to um, cite that. But can you see that? That although this is a nicely developed paragraph for APA and a research paper, you'd have to cite your sources. Otherwise, it would look like you made them up, okay? So just having William Bell cited because it was quoted is not enough. When you put things in your own words, some people think that since they put it in their own words, they don't have to cite their sources, but you have to, right? If, unless you made it up, then you probably have to, you know, we don't want you to make up your sources. Okay, now let's look at this one. And I know this is not a completed paragraph, but just looking at the sentences that are supposed to support the topic sentences. Let's see what we can say about this. How would we help this student? Okay, maintaining a balanced diet is one way to prevent a heart attack. According to Iqbal, mm -hmm. the consumption of trans fatty acid increases the risk of a heart attack. Therefore, limiting or eliminating trans fat from the diet may prevent a heart attack. Tomlinson and Walden note that insufficient consumption of fruits and veg vegetables is a major risk increasing the heart attack, increasing the consumption of fruits and vegetables on a daily basis ensures the body, including the heart, receives nutrients to remain healthy. The third one, reducing the consumption of alcohol and sodium helped to, helps, because it's the reducing the consumption, helps to contribute to a healthy diet and will lower the risk of a heart attack. Now, I'm going to let you know that I think there are some issues with this, so I'm, I'm opening the floor to anybody who can think of any one of the if issues they I, might I have. I think mm -hmm. all the sentences have issues to me. Okay, I, mean, I do too. The topic, this, the topic says maintaining a balanced diet mm -hmm. is one way to prevent a heart attack. Now, the mm -hmm. first one did not mention 
anything about a balanced diet is telling you what you are not supposed to eat. Right. To give you a risk of heart attack, which is the um trans trans fat. That's acid. right. Yes. The other one too is also saying insufficient consumption of fruits, still not mm -hmm. saying anything about a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. We can prevent the heart attack. Mm -hmm. The next one too is telling you again not to consume alcohol and sodium in order to not get a heart attack. But it's still oh, is not it? telling you about the balanced diet. They did try though. They said reducing it contributes to a healthy diet. So I think you picked up something very important, okay? I think the, the, the issue is with the topic sentence. The topic sentence is too bland. It's too general. Instead of saying maintaining a balanced diet is one way to prevent a heart attack, what if they were to say that a balanced diet which eliminates trans fat includes or increases the, um, the consumption, okay, if they could say, yes, decreases the consumption of trans fatty acids, increases the consumption of fruits and vegetables, and reduces the consumption of alcohol and sodium, will lower the risk of a heart attack, then you would expect them to talk about those very things. What do you think? Okay, it's like all the three points are related, right? They could be all if they three. do it right, yes. yes. They are related, but they're not related. The other three are not related to the topic sentence to some extent. Unless, unless they said that a balanced diet would be about reducing consumption of trans, trans fats, increasing fruits and vegetables, and reducing consumption of alcohol. So if they, if they use their topic sentence in the same way that you use a thesis sentence to give the reader an idea of what a balanced diet is about, that it's decreasing this, increasing that, because that would be a balance, right? Yes. Okay, but I agree with you. I think there's way too much information. The other thing I wanted to point out is that each of those two sentences ones, it's just, they're so wordy, right? The, first, the, the, the point that the first one is making is that is eliminating trans fat can prevent a heart attack. It's really not saying anything more than the topic sentence, right? It doesn't say anything. It's just and very it's, repetitious. Mm -hmm. I think the second sentence, um, mm -hmm. the second point, yes. the two sentences are almost saying the same thing. <laughs> exactly. I agree with you. So I think if they were to look at their ideas, they have three good ideas that they want to develop. Um, eliminating trans fats, increasing vegetables, and, de and reducing consumption of alcohol and sodium. Now, I think they could each have a paragraph on their own. I think that's the other problem with this paragraph. It is too packed. So maybe, you're, maybe what you were suggesting in the very beginning, what is a balanced diet, might be what they have to look at. What is a balanced diet? And then... See, it, it, they're getting themselves into problems because they really do need to talk about why um, reducing trans fat is important. So they probably need a paragraph on that, I would think. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you think they'd have to say more than just two or three sentences on what the risk of trans fat is? Yes, it, that would take more. That's I think very so too, point. yeah. So this, this, this paragraph, this, what they want to do in a paragraph is probably what they should do in the essay. Maybe the essay should be about the importance of a balanced diet and preventing a heart attack. And then their thesis statement could have those three issues, trans, get rid of trans fat, increase vegetables. Because the whole idea of fruits and vegetables, what is it that they have that are important for the body? Why do you have to balance it, you know? Um, and then the last one, alcohol and sodium. Do you, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, th I think that they just tried to do way too much in one paragraph and got carried away. All right, so just giving you ideas. When we get, do a lot of research, sometimes you want to put everything in the essay. And the hardest thing to do is to realize that what we want to put in one paragraph really should be expanded into an essay and everything else that we've researched have to be let go for another essay. It's very difficult to do, I know, okay? Because you've done all the work and it's so interesting. But since this is only a five paragraph essay or the most six, you have to whittle it down to make, you know, to not include too much. All right, so here's another one. 
Brainstorming is one way in which teachers in the Caribbean develop the writing competencies of their students. Okay, so they're saying that, um, I think the first one is says Caribbean students are considered struggling writers. Teachers have to find creative ways to engage them. And one possible solution is to help students write um, is through brainstorming. I don't think, what do you think? Anybody have any ideas? Um, the last sentence about brainstorming mm -hmm. seems to be okay for me with the quote from Scott 2005. Mm -hmm. um, the one about teachers have to find creative yes. ways to engage students to develop their writing skills. Right. I don't think that really has a lot to do with brainstorming. Unless they, they're using, maybe what they're doing is that's the introduction to the brainstorming idea, okay? I'm going to show you the paragraph that was developed, okay? So once again, it's hard to tell. Um, if you look at the topic sentences, brainstorming is one way in which teachers can develop the writing competencies of their students. And it looks like this particular paragraph is going to be about how brainstorming can help struggling writers, or maybe all struggle, maybe they're saying that all writers are strugglers. Don't you feel like you're struggling sometimes? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I think the thing that was the hardest to learn is that at least half of the time writing an essay is struggling to get the information, to get your ideas, to think and think and think. We think that most of the time is going to be spent in writing. So let's look at the paragraph that they've developed and maybe we can see where this person was going. I'm not saying this is a perfect paragraph. Okay. So brainstorming is one way in which teachers in the Caribbean develop the writing competencies of their students. And they're saying that they need to, so the next sentence is saying that Caribbean students are described as struggling writers. So if they're struggling writers, I guess the assumption is, is that the teachers need to help them. Okay. So maybe they need a little bit of a change in how they introduce the idea Maybe it's too abrupt from the topic sentence to Caribbean students, but the idea I think is good, okay? Maybe they could say, right, the writing competencies of their students, and then maybe, well, I guess the students do need help. They're struggling writers because of this. Or maybe they could say, because Caribbean students are struggling writers, Caribbean teachers have to find creative ways to develop their writing competencies. And I would say one such way is brainstorming. I would separate the ideas a little bit so the introduction changes. Then they try to describe brainstorming is the process by which a writer is allowed to think and write freely. Does anybody really understand from that sentence what brainstorming is? Do you know what brainstorming is? Can somebody describe it to me? Uh, I think brainstorming is like you you choose a topic uh -huh. and, and then you probably find pointers that you could put with this topic uh -huh. and what is related to it. And then from there, you would write on each related topic. Okay. All right. Robert, does so anybody I'm else want? Does anybody? Yeah, somebody else have, an, have a definition yes, for yes. brainstorming? Mm -hmm. So um, my idea of the definition for brainstorming is I'm um, not doing a research, but coming up with your um, own material, what mm -hmm. you think goes along the line of what you're writing and what makes sense logically without doing research. So you don't have to necessarily cite or put in any reference. Okay. Does anybody else want to tell me what brainstorming is? Okay, so I we think sure. mm -hmm. I think to produce idea mm -hmm. and you hear me? Yes, I am. Yes. I believe it's to um to it is to um produce idea and to solve problems. How are you going to do that? How does it like the person is trying to say that to think and write freely? Um would you, you would you try to describe it like saying take out a fresh piece of paper and write what comes to mind about that without judging yourself as writing freely? And I, okay, I, 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 so 
Mm -hmm. you have a topic for example mm -hmm. you have violence right yes and you're going to write about violence so you put violence mm -hmm. in the middle mm -hmm. then you're going to think of stuff that's related to the whole topic of violence like what causes violence you know okay all and right so your kind violence. of brainstorming is just listing kind of topics related to brains to violence now somebody else might say murder you know, and might be very different. So that's very good. Now, I, one young man said that you use brainstorming only before you do research, right? But brainstorming can be used at any time, okay? When you're trying to think of what you'd like to research, then you have an idea and you just think about anything you know about. You can do, use examples, newspaper headings, a statistic that you found from someplace. This is before you've done research. But it's also very helpful once you've done some reading and you're looking at your topics, you know, your, your topic and you're trying to come up with a thesis again, then brainstorming can be used again. And sometimes in an exam, when you have writer's block, um, free writing or brainstorming can really help. You just take three minutes and you go on the back of your paper and you just write everything you know about the topic. See, what throws you sometimes is the way the question comes at you. You can't think of how you can possibly answer that question with what you know about the topic. So you panic and you just freeze up and then you can't think. So you turn the paper over and say, okay, let's forget how the question is worded. What do I know, right? So brainstorming is very useful because it's kind of takes a judgment out. It allows you just to think about even crazy things, any idea that comes into your head. So maybe this particular paragraph might need two sentences. Like, what does it mean to think and free, write freely? I would think that for somebody reading this, um, I mean, I agree with that about great brainstorm, but I don't think their definition of it is, is good enough. So I would probably try a little bit harder. Okay, I like you guys what you're saying. All right, so this helps the students to start the writing process. Well, I think that's the whole point she's making. So it's rather repetitious. Scott notes that brainstorming helps students to create ideas and determine which ones are useful or relevant. So this is so they, she's, they're saying a lot about brainstorming, but they they at this point, if I didn't know what brainstorming was, I really wouldn't know why it was so good. So the ideas are good. They've quoted somebody, but now they need to do a little bit more explaining. This means that brainstorming helps students not only generate ideas. See, can you see that the whole section on brainstorming, which is very important? and the person tried, they have evidence that it works, but we're not totally, if we didn't know what brainstorming was, we aren't really, we don't really know what it is. So I think they could repeat themselves less and give a little bit more detailed explanation of how a student actually does it, right? So there, and then they're trying to round it up by saying, when Caribbean students therefore engage in brainstorming, they develop their critical thinking and writing skills. Okay, I like the one where the quote, it says they can, so they freely write ideas and then they can determine which ones are useful or relevant. So they're starting with the quote, but I still think there's a little bit too much repetition. But you can see that for a first draft, this is not a bad paragraph, okay? You can see that they're, they're thinking about how to connect the idea. Why do teachers, why would brainstorming help students? Because students need help, right? We're all learning. They might, you know, they might not know how to generate ideas. One of the ways to help them is to teach them about brainstorming. This is what brainstorming is. In fact, Scott says it's true. Caribbean students can create, you know, okay? So it's, it's a really good first draft. I like it, but I think it needs work. Oops. All right. Um, I there's just a couple more slides left. Um, I'm going to, I don't think I want to work with them. Well, I don't know if I, there's a YouTube uh, in this slide and I would like um, Robin to leave this YouTube thing with you. It's really, it's a very good, maybe it's about five, seven minutes, but it's one of the best um, discussions of synthesis. Now, because it's so packed full of information, to show it now, you'd want to have it available for you to look for you to look at it several times. Okay, so I'm going to Robin. You can make sure they get that um, YouTube URL. Yes. Yes. Yeah, send it to them. It, it, I mean, I I did I it, it's a uh, I gave the outline of the 
of the YouTube, but that doesn't tell me much. So I think it'd be really good if they could watch it for themselves and have it as an available source, because no matter what subject they're doing, knowing how what synthesis is and how it works and how they can do it could be very useful. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Now, now we're talking about integrating sources. This is more in the actual writing of the paragraph. I'm going to leave it in there, but I'd like to now um, open it up again for people to share their, because um, I think we finished with me talking and now let's look at what you're doing and see how we can help each other. What do you think, Robin? Perfect. Uh, so okay. we're going to, I'm going to call on the, call the names so of the persons who Mm -hmm. um just when once i call your name so margaret just stop sharing for me i will stop so that, sharing yes yeah, right. so that they can bring up their papers so when i call your name you should bring up your paper so if i call your name if you are sharing or the group member sharing um why is it as, as my essay disappeared because i did stop stop sharing but it's is it gone no so it's okay it's okay, okay. So, all right okay. right so i'm going to start with um, let's start at the my, my top of my participants list. Georgette Hines, either you share or your group members, and Margaret will provide feedback. Okay, I need to see it. Somehow I'm not seeing anything. They, they don't start sharing it. Okay. Oh, that's why they haven't you haven't started. Okay. You right. haven't clicked just, on your start sharing. Okay. Yes, they haven't started sharing it. Georgia Hines, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. Are you oh, sharing or your group member sharing? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So we shared last week. Share for me, please. Thank you. Did you do any additional work based on the feedback? Miss Hines, did you and your group members yeah, do I'm any coming. additional? Okay. You didn't answer my question. Did you do any additional work? Miss Hines, I'm speaking to you. So I'm here, sir. Right. So either you or your group members need to respond. Did you guys do any additional work? Sir, say no. Okay. All right. Tariq Fenton, go ahead for me. Eric, are you going to share or am I supposed to share? Go ahead, Nikita. Just put up, put up the um, outline so I can see it, okay? Go ahead, Nikita, share for us. Yes, sir. All right, thanks. All right, so this is the topic sentence. I need to see it. From okay. the top, though. But you need to go from the top, though, because I think Margaret is sharing because I'm not seeing anything. You're not looking okay. at the screen, Margaret. You need to oh. go. It's they're sharing. So you need to click on the Zoom thing. Zoom okay. thing. Right. Okay. If you're not oh, seeing. Oh, I see. Okay, I see it. Okay, I, see it. I got it. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. All, All right. right. So the broad topic is cybersecurity. The narrow topic is the roles of cybersecurity in a company. Okay, and that's a good question. Um, this, the, there are several roles. Um, okay, so you're in the thesis statement are going to state what those several roles are. It increases protection. It prevents data breach. Um, what's the difference between protection? Oh, for in, IT infrastructure. Okay, that's different from data. Yeah. And it monitors attacks. Okay, so the three things are increasing IT infrastructure, protection of IT infrastructure, preventing data breach, and monitoring attacks from, I guess that's from outside. Yes. All right, can we go down to the, the, the paragraph that you'd like to look at? You, the, this is the topic sentence. Okay, now you realize that these topic sentences are just um, first draft topic sentences. Okay. All right. Okay. Increasing protections and in infrastructure. All right. So 
Now you said there's one role, but you've already told me that it's one of the roles. So let's look at your three your three um, sentences. Okay, the use of a firewall protects data. But isn't that your second one that it protects data? No. Yes, yes it is. Yes, yes, it is. So it's so, yes. So what you what I probably need to know, unless you did it in the introduction, how is infrastructure di different from data? Mm. So it could be that if there's a difference, it, you mm -hmm. might need to define it in a mm -hmm. IT infrastructure as you are as it, as you intend to discuss it in that um, in the paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, because I mean, I don't know much about IT, but infrastructure is a very important word because from my understanding of it, it's how everything is held together. Mm -hmm. So if, if somebody could get in and change the infrastructure, I mean, like I said, I'm talking outside of my knowledge, but just the idea of the word, it sounds very destructive because I'm sure that they wouldn't be able to use their data or, you know, mess things up. So, so you're saying that a firewall protects the inf um, is one way of protecting the infrastructure, all right? Mm -hmm. So then, um, and then it says um, training um, and identifying vulnerab vulnerabilities. Okay, so in your, in your paragraph, um, what is a firewall? Well, I would have to define that. Well, if I don't, unless you've done it, yeah, I would think so. And I, I'm, I'm thinking that your, your topic sentence can be improved. Now that you have your three points or two points, um, you could say increasing, um, that you, um, increasing protection to IET infrastructure through, okay? And then list the two or three ways that you're going to, because that would give you the opportunity to, to let the reader know what what it is what you need to do to protect it because one thing is an, is a firewall uh, one is the other one is identifying and fixing it vulnerabilities doesn't that show the third one the third sub claim yes. margaret doesn't that show like the third sub claim let me look let me look at the thesis let me look at the thesis statement again okay and this okay okay because it says monitoring. monitoring. Okay, yes. It's a fair yes. one. Now, the thing is, is that sometimes when this happens, you are you have all the information, but you haven't organized it well. Okay. So maybe what you're really looking at is that the ways of 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 um, protecting it is two of let, let me look at the 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 set first the paragraph again. Let me see what your idea. No, the, the scroll down. Yeah. Okay, you're saying firewall training and identifying and fixing vulnerabilities. Okay, maybe that is your thesis. I'm not sure because I don't know enough about it, but it seems to me that a firewall, um, it, it might do both. It might protect infrastructure and the data because it says it protects the data and the computer systems. A system sounds like an infrastructural. Infrastructure. Okay. Right. Then it says providing training for operators of critical infrastructure on, on the different threats. Okay. That sounds like, um, okay, the, the firewall is one thing. That might be the last thing you put in your paragraph because you need to train. Okay. The firewall is already something that's, that's developed, right? And in order to develop it, you'd have to be aware of the the um, the security threats that phishing applies. Okay, so it, it seems like once you, once you know what the phishing attempts are, you can put in an appropriate firewall or appropriate um, protection. Is that am I getting it right? Yes. Sir. Okay, and then it says identifying and fixing vulnerabilities can prevent future breaches. So in a way, C and B are interlinked, okay? Mm -hmm. It makes your thesis a bit more complex, but it seems to me that what, that, that the, it's, I don't know, it's kind of, you have to switch it and instead of, um, and that's why you're in trouble. So it seems to me that what you're trying to do is you're trying to, let me see, protect the, the systems from unauthorized access. And you're doing that through providing training, mm -hmm. and, okay? 
And, and the training is including identifying and fixing vulnerabilities. So they need to learn about phishing and all the different kinds of attacks. Mm -hmm. And they need to, to start thinking about what the future breaches are. Now, in your introduction, did you give your reader an idea of what phishing and these things are and that these are the things they have to look out for? No, I didn't. Okay, because um, are you in IT? No. Are any, are any of your group members, do they know a lot about, um, um, yes, um, yeah, what, what cyber attacks are? Did you look at what, did, in your introduction, did you explain what cyber attacks are? No, I didn't um, explain, but I did read up on it. Okay, because if your essay is about, can I look at your thesis again? It looks like you know a lot, but you, you, it's, it's not clear yet. Okay, what, what are the roles of cybersecurity? Okay, so you need cybersecurity because there's such a thing as cyber attacks. Okay, so you need to, you need to be aware of what they're protecting them from. So at some point you have to look at that. Uh, so that so that you can yeah this is this one so you need to protect the infrastructure you need to protect data um, now the phishing data. yeah phishing seems to be slightly different okay uh, because it, to me the cyber attacks can come through viruses through worms through trojan horses those are very different from phishing phishing mm -hmm. is something that um people like um who don't know much about it's not really about the computer so much as the fact that somebody can fool you into thinking that they're real and they're authentic yes. like for instance they will set they will sit, pretend they're from a bank and mm -hmm. say they, they'll, they'll pretend they're from the, Nova, the Bank of Nova Scotia. The, the URL that they give you has BNS in it. So it sounds like they really are authentic. That's phishing. So I'm not sure that that is a cyber attack. That sounds like something that people do on any kind on Facebook. They can do it in email. They can do it on WhatsApp. It's anybody who has access to you as an internet user can fish, okay? So you, you have to be really clear about what a cyber attack is. And there are, I mean, recently there are several, two, at least two cyber attacks made in the US. I forget what they, do you remember what they were, Robin? One was on a pipeline, so they couldn't get any gas out to the end. Right, they, and, and, and it, it, I think was, with, was without electricity for days. Exactly, so look into what that attack was. And, and I know that um, my daughter, um, is a, a lawyer and they have to put in all kinds of protections because what um, people who can worm their way in and whatever way can attack, you know, use the, 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 the logarithms or whatever they use, they try to hunt for your file. So instead of taking a person for ransom, they take a personal file that a lawyer has and they say, if you don't pay us so many millions, we're going to release all this personal uh, um, information. That is it a is cyber actually, attack. Yeah, and yes. it's actually very popular in North America. Yes, and Canada. Government, government agent um, organizations, they like to go in, steal the documents, and then demand a ransom. Exactly. So, they ra so, so cyber attacks are attacking your information. So you need to do a little bit more understanding. And so I, I'm not, I don't think phishing is so much a cyber attack. Would you agree with me, Robin? I'm not sure. Well, I, I think we would have to be guided by the literature, and this is where the reading okay. comes in. Okay, that's, that's okay. Them. That's okay. I, I know yeah. that um, there is there's a type where they, uh, this happened to people I know, where they, they, they get hold of your email address, your email, um, all of your emails. What do you call it? Your addresses? Your email addresses. And it is a fishing expedition. And, and my husband worked for this organization and they were told, and it's a worldwide one. So they were told that one of their workers in, in Hong Kong, his wife was really, really ill. And, um, or he said that, and he needed help with her medical bills and everybody in his office, you know, they sent money. And somebody from their office saw this same guy in an airport somewhere else in the world. And he said, how was your wife doing? And he said, what do you mean? <laughs> That's when they found out. So. 
you know, once you hear about it, you're more careful. Okay, so I, okay, so we'll say phishing is a cyber attack because you don't know who the person is who's feeding you lies. But there are different kinds of cyber attacks. Okay, there are embedded um, worms, embedded Trojan horses, um, different ways where they can either ruin the data you have so you can't use it, steal it, or convince you of, of other things. So be a little bit. So once you know the different kinds of cyber attacks, you'll have a better idea of how you want to organize your answer, okay? Yes, yes. All right, so you, it looks like you know quite a, it does look like you know quite a bit. I mean, you've got good language and we all know what phishing is. All right, is there a role preventing, uh, preventing data breach? Okay, so data breach would be if they stole it or corrupted it. Yes. Um, yes. Um, infrastructure, I think you're gonna to need to explain what you mean about protecting infrastructure, okay? And um, monitoring attacks. Oh, these, okay, go, go, yes, yeah, so, okay, monitoring it. So this is, this is your, these are your, your topic sentence, not your, sen your sentences for your paragraph. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so you just need to keep the information separate. And okay, the monitoring one. So in your third paragraph, you'd have to look at what are the different ways in which they monitor attacks. So that's fairly clear. Um, uh, we noticed that in your, scroll down again and let's look at that paragraph again. Okay, firewalls. Um, this is supposed to be with infrastructure. So I would think that there have to be something in your topic, in your sentences of your paragraph that do talk about um, what the infrastructure is, what role it plays, and how you're going to protect it, okay? Yes. You need to rethink it. Okay, have fun. Next. Oh, Robin, did you want to add, add anything? Sorry. I just wanted somebody else to go. <laughs> we spent a okay, lot of go time. on. Next, next person. Let's next person go. Yes. Uh, Avril Morgan, let's see what you have. You and or your group members. Avril Morgan, are you there? Or the group members? Sorry, I'm trying to get access because the person who is supposed to present is not. Um, she doesn't seem to be in a class. Yeah, but I told you guys that you must, everybody must have a copy of the paper. In the right, she did send it. She said to send it after I sent mine, what I did to her to complete. She said to send it back to my ECC email, sir, but I was not able to open it. So I'm trying to forward it to another email. So meanwhile, while she's trying to get it forwarded, is there somebody else that can? Rocky um, McDonald, go ahead for me. Did you share last week, Rakisha? Yes, sir, I did. Yeah, right. I think I remember that name. I think yeah. I remember Rakisha's name, yes. All right, Chantel Emmanuel, go ahead for me. Chantel Emmanuel, and all your group members. Okay, she's sharing screen. Okay, all right. What are the reasons for training and development in the fireplace, in the workplace? Okay, why, in other words, why why is it good? To, um, yeah. Okay. Increasing employing motiv motivation, staff performance. Oh, scroll down a bit. I need to see. Chantal, you're moving too fast. Oh, we're going to see the paper. Yes. Okay. Let me see that. We need to see the thesis. Thank you. I want to make mine larger. How am I going to make this larger? You can't make it larger. She has to increase the. Um, no, I, okay. All right. No, I was. I wanted to put the the screen right across my paper, but anyway, I've got something. Okay. Can you? In, okay. Increase the size for me from one hundred to. I'm trying to. Not I'm you. Trying. Yes. No, I'm trying to. I, it just. It's only a one third of my screen. I would like it to go for my whole screen, and that has to be something I need to do. View side by side, full screen. Okay. I, I lost that. Oh, there it is. Okay, research question. What are the reasons for training and development? Okay. Um, increasing mo um, employee motivation, increasing the staff performance. Okay, so increasing motivation, performance, and reducing 
turnover or okay. All right. So the okay, the, your topic sentences, okay, increasing employee motivation, improving staff performance, and reducing employee turnover. And I just want to comment on these topic sentences. It's a good beginning, but really you're just repeating your thesis statement. It would be better if after you've developed your the ideas in your paragraph. So let's go to the one the paragraph you want me to look at. Okay. Okay, we're doing the first paragraph. Increasing in motivation, is that what we're doing? Okay, so you're saying that employee motivation is, you're, you're defining it. Okay, um, you're, okay. the first one is, is definition. The second one says that training and development increases their motivation by providing career development opportunities. No, you can't put two ideas in there, okay? Because one of your your one of your points is, is that it in it it increases staff retention. So you want to save that for the next one. What you're trying to say is what makes employees enthusiastic about their job, and you're saying hold on, that hold on, hold on, sorry. Margaret. Can you reduce sorry. the size a little? Because I need to see the thing in full. Because I think that's okay. Right. So she's looking at employee uh, motivation my thing too is that the definition would you say margaret that she needs to have a source for that definition uh, she could she she could if she found it as a definition but what if it's something that she thought it thought through i am not convinced she thought it through um, okay well well yes we did we did okay all right okay, turn it to I, me tell me and right, it should not be a, yes. organization a, it should be an organization um, I'm thinking that that could be almost your topic sentence, right? Because your thesis is, is that increasing motivation is, is one of the reasons for training. So I'm thinking that um, I would change it around and I say that training and development increases mo employee motivation and then state the ways in which it does, okay? Because the first one is, okay, the first one is a, is a definition. The second one says that training and, and development um, provides career um, opportunities, okay? So I would use that. So why, why does um, providing career development? And so that would, that would be one of the ways to make them more enthusiastic. They're better trained, they have more opportunities, okay? Um, the second one says, it increases their self-confidence. So I, I would look at what kinds of training, okay? The last one, um, that's how does, how is this, is D about training? It's about um, retaining staff, but it's not about training. Right, so there's a shift in focus. Yes, and I don't think, I, I don't, your paper is about how training, right? It's, right. it's really, it's not right. about how to keep your, it's right. not how, yeah, so. So um, she's not answering how, the evidence is not answering how the no. training increases yes. employee motivation. I think B and C could, okay? Because you're saying that it, it, it increases their self-confidence. And so you could look at what kinds of training and what evidence there is. Um, that it, how it, and why it would increase your self-confidence, okay? And also the training, and one of the reasons it um, provides career development opportunities. Now, um, companies are not too happy about training their employees to get rid of them, okay? They'd like them to become enthusiastic because they're better workers, they, they're they happier, they, they're more productive, okay? So only uh, to me, only B and C are really answering the question. So you can develop them. I like the fact that you have um, talked about what you know what motivation is. Okay, but, you, but D doesn't fit at all. All right, let's go to the next one. Do you have another paragraph, or is there another okay, person? Okay, thank you. you. That's all right. All right. Yes. If you do, you have any questions? Please be free. Feel free. Okay, next. Um, Emmanuel, do you have any questions? And the group members, as notice persons are quiet, do you have any questions? Any questions? 
Yes, sir, I do, but my okay. background is a bit noisy. All right, so for B, mm -hmm. where she says um, I could speak um, our training and development in... Mm -mm. Yes, save the training second key, part, yes. Key where she says training and development yes. helped by increasing self-confidence. So you're saying that I should state um, what kind of training that um, increases self-confidence? Well, give examples. Like I you, give you, examples. Uh, I, I okay, think, so I you're think, saying yes. like training and development such as? Well, it could, but in your reading, they may have told you why or how it does this, okay? To me, if, if somebody trains me when I work for them, it makes me feel more secure in my job. So that would increase my self-confidence. The fact that I know more about what I'm doing would increase my self-confidence. Say I worked in a bank and they gave me more training in accounts or in, in investment. I would just feel, you know, I would feel, yeah, I would feel much more confident, okay? And uh, the fact that okay. I could move up the ladder and I could make more money, okay? So that's good. Right. I mean, right. So, and, and the fact that they train me means that there will be other jobs in the bank that I might be better suited for. And that would increase my, my motivation, okay? I would feel more enthusiastic. The fact that, that you know, if, when anybody um, pays attention to you and, and helps you to grow, it makes you feel better. So there's a psychological reason as well as the, as the actual um, skills that you get in whatever job you're being trained for. Okay, so you have to, I guess what you have to do is the point is right, but now you have to develop it. It's, it's, a, it's a claim. You're making right. a claim and now you have to back it up with evidence, either from studies or, or anecdotes, okay? Does that help? Okay, yeah. and remember that, that retain, retaining people that was your third okay. point of your thesis. You don't want to put it in your second paragraph. You want to put it in your third one, okay? Right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I can go ahead and share now. Thank you. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead and share, please. I'm coming, sir. Okay. Yes, Shanet, when, when, after this person shares. Miss Avril, what is taking so long? The Lord Sorry, is my go. phone I'm using, sir. I'm, <laughs> no, other, I'm glad, I, I mean, not glad, but it makes you feel less stupid when other people's um, devices don't work as well. So. <laughs> I feel like I'm all thumbs sometimes when I'm trying to navigate. Miss Morgan, while Miss Morgan is waiting to find the buttons to share screen, um, Shanet Bailey, go ahead for me. Mm -hmm. I think she has the other part of the same paper. Okay. Miss Bailey? Did she leave the room? She asked permission to show. Right. Shanet Bailey, can you respond, please? Sorry, it's coming up. It's not coming up. We're not seeing anything on the screen. Normally, if it's coming up, it shows. Are you doing share screen? She hasn't shared anything yet. Mm. All right. She says it's coming up. I'm not seeing anything. Shanice Plummer, are you there? Okay. So, Shanet is... is... Started. Shanet, there's nothing on the screen. Okay. okay. All right. Finally, we're seeing something. We're Our doing the cyber. Oh, this is a cybersecurity one. Yeah, but she's showing another part of the paper. Okay, let's go. This one is a challenging paper. My hat's off to you guys. Okay, scroll to where you want me to see it. Okay, increasing protection for IT infrastructure. Um, refers to the, okay, the hardware, the software, the network resources required for existence. Okay, what kinds of attacks do they make on the infrastructure? Um, yes, 
What kind of a tax? I think that's a, an excellent sentence, okay? But the reader would want to know what kinds of attacks that you're protecting it from. The third one, I don't see the relevance of the third one. I don't know if you see it. Um... Oh, companies can strengthen their cybersecurity systems. The, the thing is, we haven't got. Okay, can I see the thesis again? Maybe I'm misunderstanding the thesis. Okay. It says, what are the roles? And the quality of the source. Okay, all right, okay, just, just let, let me just think. So you're looking at the roles of cybersecurity. So one of the roles is to increase, is, is to protect IT infrastructure. Okay, scroll down to that, to that paragraph. Okay, so you're saying that increasing protection for IT structure, um, is important because the infrastructure refers to, so, so I like the fact that you're actually explaining what the infrastructure is. But what I, 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 I guess as a, a reader, if you don't, what, what happens when, when there, it, how is it attacked, I guess? But I see the thing is you're talking about the importance, the, it, the question is the importance of the cyber security. And you're saying it, 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 the, it's important because it increases, it protects the infrastructure. And I like this paragraph because then you're telling me what the infrastructure is. And I think what you need to let me know is what happens if it's not protected. Okay, so I understand that it's the, hard, the, the composite hardware, the software, the network resources, all of these things make up the infrastructure. What kinds of attacks are made on these things? Okay, so I understand why and how it, and you don't have to go into detail about how to protect it, but we want to understand why it's important, okay? Do you understand? Robin, do you get what I'm getting at? They're, they're saying that it's important to protect it. Yeah, because I, I don't think the, 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 the B and C is not, they're not telling us how. So if, if, for example, you have composite hardware, software network uh, resources, you could actually pull some of that out and then say no, demonstrate how no those as infrastructure, how cybersecurity protect them as IT infrastructure. And well, I want, this is why I want to look at the, at the, at the thesis statement again, because it, they may not be talking about how, they may be talking about why. What are the roles? Okay, so it, it, it's, in a way, they're answering why is it important to have cybersecurity in a company? And, and it seems to me that they need cybersecurity because they need to protect their infrastructure. They need to prevent data breach. And they need to be able to monitor future, any types of possible attacks in the future. That seems to be. So it, it's, what has to be clear is that it's, it's a why. Why do they have to do this? So they say they need to protect IT infrastructure, that's a very interesting thought to me, but I'm ignorant. What is the infrastructure? Why does it need protection? Because it doesn't really sound like they're gonna say what types of cyber, like what the name of the cybersecurity is, but it says, what are the roles? You get what I'm saying, Robin? Yes, 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 yes. Scroll yeah. down. I think, I think we were thrown because the other one was, that we didn't catch on that that's what they were doing, the right. other person who was sharing. Yes, and I even have a I I even sure. have reservations about the for mm -hmm. being the source itself. Techopedia sounds like Wikipedia is just a tech version of Wikipedia. One thing I've learned when I was teaching the, the sciences, um, mm -hmm. and they had engineering with it, was that they do. I mean, it's been a couple of years since I taught it, but they often do have um, sites that give a lot of information. Okay, so I, I, what I did is I would actually um, highlight it, put it in the, the th and I'd look at it myself before I, because sometimes they're really good and sometimes the, the three sentences that they have on the, on, the, on the screen are the three sentences that appear in the essay. I've just learned that I can't tell except by looking. So I always highlighted it and put it into the, um, whatever you call it, the URL place. Mm -hmm. so I wouldn't know one way or the other if it's a good one or not. Yeah, I would check it myself one. as well. Yeah, yeah I was checked yeah, it. That was one thing I did for, I mean, my students knew me. They were scared 
to do anything silly because I highlighted every single thing in there and looked at it because that was the only way I could learn. So I'm not sure if it's good or bad. Um, but it, it, it sounds to me, what are the roles? So the roles are to protect IT infrastructure. Okay, so if that's its role, the question I would ask, what is infrastructure and why does it need protecting? Right. Role why, is to protect why, it. Yes. yes, why does it need protecting? So I think that paragraph, it answers the question that in cyber, cyber, whatever it is, is important because the infrastructure is this. And if it's breached, so maybe you do need to give an, an, an idea of what kind of breaches happen and why it's important to have a cybersecurity system to protect the infrastructure. And then you so, can do it for the other three things. Sorry. Right. So, so even for example, let's say network um, resources, mm -hmm. network resources, for example, are responsible for, you know, I don't know the language of IT either, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. let's say um, troubleshooting or artificial intelligence. I don't know the language. So mm -hmm. in saying that, no, you're going to say, point out the importance of why no, because of the importance of networks resources to like a bank or to uh, uh, mm. a, a government agency, you're going to say no, because of its importance as an infrastructure, this is why it needs to be protected because pr private data, mm -hmm. bio data, personal information or whatever it is. Yes, and, and you know what? why that's helpful is you don't have to know an awful lot about computer language, right. but you can understand what they do, okay? Right, right. right. Does, that, does that help? Um, where's the name again? Janet Bailey, it's at the top. Janet, does that help? Janet? Yes, sir, it helps. Okay, so just, I, sometimes I tell my student, just write, the, the, simplify what it is you're trying to do and put it on the wall in front of you. So you keep going back to it. So keep in mind that you're trying to um, support the fact that um, organizations and companies need cybersecurity. And you're saying the role that they play is to protect these three things, okay? So you explain what those things are, uh, what happens when they're not protected. So of course they need protection, okay? That would be probably the simplest way and the most interesting way for somebody who's not an IT person to actually answer this. And that goes back to you, Robin. Sometimes the the, uh, what, the journals are so technical that um, for a first year student not doing IT, that might be, might be better to look at the what we're suggesting is why does it need, why do they need to have cybersecurity? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to share? Thanks, Janet. Yeah. Did you get? Did you find it on their phone? The other person? Yes, sir. Let me try. Let me try. Yes, let's. I'd I love to see it. it. Please. Her phone actually bounced off. No. Oh. Her phone bounced off. Okay. Avril, I think it was Avril was trying to share, right? Yes. Yes. I'm... How is it coming? I have total sympathy mm -hmm. with these devices. Avril, you can put it in the WhatsApp group and I share a screen for you. Okay, sir. Oh, good. And where are the other group members? Why is it that you are struggling and there are two other persons with whom you're working? Don't seem they're at class, sir. Okay. All right, put it in the WhatsApp group and I'll share for you. Well, you're quite okay, Robin. <laughs> Trust me, I learned from them, actually. The students over the years, they teach me a whole heap. Sir, you can do this and... It's and true. I, I, yeah, you're I, so right. I, I do a lot of troubleshooting because I do digital marketing. I do a lot oh. of troubleshooting. So I learn a lot of things on my own. I know. My children do that too. They, they don't have the reservations that I do. I always think I'm just stupid, you know, and I hit keys and they go all over the place and then I panic when I shouldn't. All right. Does it look like Avril really is going to work? Sorry, I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> oh no, I don't God. think so. <laughs> <laughs> Roberta, did you show anything? You're off. You're you're unusually silent. I'm here, sir. Um, Shani is my um groupmate of the information. So is so Shani sure. able to share? Miss Plummer, I called her name several times. I did, I don't remember her responding. If she's not able to share, then I'll bring it up afterwards. Are you able to? Miss Plummer, you're able to share. Oh, we shared um, on Monday. Oh, you shared on Monday. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, so I'm gonna 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 to it as well. Okay. All right. So, so I just I just sent it in the group. All right. So let me bring it up and share. Open. All right. So I'm going to share a screen, and you know have to you, you and your group members i'm only sharing so please respond or take notes okay hold on are you seeing my screen seeing the paper yes i'm seeing it okay one of the some of the ways in which animal cruelty can be prevented in jamaica okay all right adopting an animal donating resources and educating persons to care for animals is some of the ways which animal cruelty can be prevented. Okay, I just wanna look at the thesis. I would, um, I'd probably start with educating persons, okay? Because I don't even know, if, unless people know that they're animals to adopt and if they're aware of the SPCA where you can donate. I don't know if, um, you know, if people don't know the other two are, so I would switch it around, what do you think? What do you think, Robin? Well, the thing is, I, I was going to, after you do this, I'm going to teach them what we call global organization in terms okay. of the domino effect. But I haven't okay. mentioned it to them yet. So I'm No problem. So we'll just look yes. at the paragraphs. No problem. It's very easy to shift. Okay, so we want to look at adopting. Okay. Okay, can you scroll, scroll a little bit? So I, I need to be able to read the whole paragraph. Yes, thanks. Okay, stop there. Okay. I guess my problem is, is I don't, I can't link, I don't see the link between cruelty and adopting. Okay. Um, there's an assumption there that the reason people are cruel to animals is because they don't have a home or they don't belong to anybody. Is, is that the assumption behind it? I just need to know where the, the idea is coming from. Who's they the person? Are, they do have a home, but there are persons who they're not able to care for it. They're probably at the home, you know, but they're not able to feed them properly and stuff like that. Okay, but why? A lot of people, I mean, I've lived here for 40 some years and um, People, I, I have found that people have more dogs sometimes or animals. Well, I'm thinking mostly of dogs. Are you talking mostly about dogs or are you talking about any kind of animal cruelty and any, kind, of any kind. kind of animal? Okay, is is there um is there cruelty to to farm animals as well? Do people are people cruel to the animals that they farm, like cows and pigs and sheep and goats and things like that? Do sometimes, they sometimes because um for example uh -huh. Uh, a donkey. Okay. Um, uh, I think persons tend to put ex excessive um, weight and stuff on them. On, yes. Okay. And maybe beat them when they when. Okay. When so they, yes. right. So um, educating people. I think education seems to be the strongest point there that they need to actually understand what cruelty is. Right. Okay. And this definition here should really come in the intro, not should be here. Yes. Right, that's a good that's a good thing, yeah. So that needs to go in the introduction, um, because your your thesis is is that how you're going to um, decrease? Yes. Yeah. Ways to yes. right. It's really ways to can be prevented. Okay. Right. Okay. So I can. Okay. So it's to be prevented. So you're saying that if people who are um, upset by animal cruelty, they should be willing to take in animals that are being um, treated badly. Is that what you're saying about adopting yes. an animal? Yes. Oh, yes. So, so you'd have, so po possibly it would have to be people who are interested in, so they would be interested in finding people to adopt, to find homes for these people, for these animals. Okay. Um, due to animal cruelty and an excess number, not amount, okay, it's number of animals. You can only have an amount of water Okay, because you can't number water, but anything that you can count if you use the word number. So an excess number of animals. Okay. Um, 
so it's 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 just uh, it's just dealing with a small a small number of animals a small percentage of animals um, can be adopted. Um, should, should like educating people is one thing, but I'm thinking should there be any kind of um, of oh, what's the word I want? Um, oh, sometimes words escape me. Consequences like to me. Um, if there are consequences for cruelty to animals, um, would that help prevent cruelty? Because you're trying to prevent cruelty, okay? So you're yes, saying that that's if- That's a good one. Yes, because I'm thinking that adopting um, is, only going to pre is only going to help animals that you have seen, you know, that, that have, are at the SP, JSPCA. And those people, th those have already been brought there by people who do not like to see animals mistreated. So it's a smaller, that's why I put it at the end. Robin is going to, yeah, so I'm thinking educating is very important, but I think you need some teeth um, into it. I, and and that, then there, that's a difficulty because in a country that even people can't get enough to eat and, and be fed properly, how are you going to <laughs> starvation of animals, which is a kind of cruelty? I, I mean, I really like your, your, um, your, your, um, Topic, by the way, it's 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 fascinating to me. Okay, um, so it seems to me that the JSPCA is one organization that is working on decreasing. So you know, so that's that's part of the adopting. Okay, Pet Haven is another one. So there are actual organizations who do their little bit to you know to at least rescue some animals from cruelty. So it, to me, like adoption and SBCA is kind of like a rescue mission to rescue them. So it, it's part of a, 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 it's not just about adoption, it's about rescuing and then finding homes for them. Wouldn't you say that? Yes. The, yeah, so it's a rescue and adopting. Okay, so you've got two points there, educating, rescuing and finding homes for them. Um, and the thing is, how do we put teeth in it? So is there any way we could have some kind of, um, I just hate to put more pressure on the police. We seem to be having such a hard job just controlling crime and violence to make them also look out for um, cruelty to persons, animals. Persons, mm -hmm. could persons could report it like community members. Okay, so maybe the communities could have, I think years ago, a long time ago, when they found stray animals, they put them in pens, right? So they wouldn't be on the road. It's a really good topic that you have. It's something that needs a lot of thought. Um, I do think education is very important. I do think rescuing with as much as possible so that if people can report, um, so education for me would come first, you know, um, so that people will report animals that are, are being abused or are starving. But how are we going to then save them? So we've got these two agencies that try to save them and find homes for them. How are we going to um, feed them and, and give them support? because it takes money to care when it about animals. So, oh, you know what some animal, what some countries do is they encourage people to spay their animals so they don't produce any more so that they, the number of animals in a country is decreased. I don't know if that's something to think about. I, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, you said oh, donate. You mean like birth, something like birth control? Yes, yes, I think the SPCA the JSPCA, when you take, I've had animals from them, they spay them first. So especially cats, if you have an animal, if you're going to have an, take a, pick up an animal from them, they operate on them first so they can't reproduce. Okay. But neither the males or the females. So that's one way of preventing the overpopulation of animals. So that could, that's a, so that the point you're working on, on the whole thing about um, decreasing the population, rescuing, finding homes is a good point. It says donations. That would work in with um, the JSBCA because, let me, let me look at that one. Can I see that one, donating resources? These two things. I don't think they're finished with this one. No, I know, but it seems to me that two and the, the one above and that um, they seem very linked together because what they're recognizing is that you need money to, to help the animals that are rescued. 
okay, like the director of Montego Bay Animal he Heaven, okay, they flew some to Canada, getting them, that's finding homes for them. And by hosting the Furball fundraiser in aid of abandoned animals, to me, the JSPCA, the, those two things, what do you think, Robin? Don't you think those two, two categories are really one? Um, the first, this one about um, adoption one. and donating. Yes, they seem to be related to each other because the JSPCA and Animal Haven and Furball and Montego Bay are about raising funds and, and rescuing and finding homes for animals. They seem, unless you want to um, have one for fundraising and one for rescue, I don't know. I'm just trying to help you guys. I, I, I think it's a really important topic. But I'm trying to think. Um, what about um, enforcing um, existing legislation or crafting existing um, new legislation? That's what I was thinking. I, I was thinking that, that there has to be some kind of, of um, punishment or deterrent. I, I, punishment right. may not be the right word, but some kind of deterrent to um, animal cruelty. And education is the first step. Um, because it, 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 I haven't been to a lot of zoos, but when I went to, to the Jamaican Zoo when I first came here, it was the first zoo that I had seen, please do not stone the animals. And I thought that was very interesting <laughs> that you have a, a culture where people stone animals that are in, in zoos. So obviously education is really, really important. And, and it wouldn't just be at the school level, be advertising and, and you know, and, and the furball campaign even would be, could be part of that, so. Um, yeah, I, I can really only see if, if you have the one about the, the in introducing legislature, that could be a third point. Even if the, it isn't present in Jamaica right now, you could look at other countries that do it and look at how they did it. And, and you know, you can talk about that it might not be effective in the very beginning, but, you know, if, if people are known to be obviously cruel, that there's some kind of, um, you know, punishment of some kind okay what do you okay. think yes all right i like your i like your topic by the way yes thank you okay all right i think that's about it we only have two oh. minutes oh, oh well, gosh the time goes so fast was there we got everybody that wanted to talk is there anybody else last minute questions or anything want to share or Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. One thing. Um, yeah. Is it is it that um, we are not able to, like, uh, a colleague would be able to send something to the ECC email and it would be open because that is what was happening with this information. I had to send it to another email. I don't know if because it's not coming directly from the school. It has, but you were didn't you get the email that says that you have to use your ECC email? That's what she sent it to, sir, but I was not able to open it there. I had to send it to my personal email. Well, I, I assume that something is wrong on your end and nothing is wrong with the email itself because all the other students are sharing and doing um, it from that. And I actually have not got any reports from students saying that they are unable to open documents when they are sent via their school emails. Okay. It could be something on your end. Okay, sir. All right. Anybody else? Um, Roberta, go ahead. I see your, your hand is raised. Yes, sir. So reference what you would have sent in the WhatsApp group this afternoon about um, the badges and the APA stuff. And All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Margaret is here. We are speaking. Let us deal with that after. Oh, Let's okay. No problem. Right. So we can do that in the consultation time at nine. But um, if it is that um, we no one else wants to ask Margaret any for assistance, mm -hmm. then we can ask her. Thank her for coming, and then um, she can leave. But let's close off properly before we get into quote unquote domestic affairs. All right? Okay. Yes. Anybody um, wants yeah, to? Should I say me? something? Yes. yes I, would, I would love to say something. I've I've had so much fun. I I I enjoy the whole writing process. I know how hard it is. I know how sick I get. But I like to see your ideas and I know how hard it is to bring it from thesis to, to, to paragraph and how those paragraphs can get all mushed and mixed up together. It's, it's really hard work and I really am impressed. I'm impressed with the work that you're doing and the fact that you seem to be working well together. 
and that you have really good ideas. It's, you know, just because, and, and it's really, it's the very beginning of it. So you, you know, I, I can see good essays coming out of what you're doing. And I really thank you for letting me be part of this process. Thank you so very much, um, Margaret. So on behalf of the students, I really want to thank you for coming and sharing your insights. And I know that you'd have enjoyed it. And I, uh, I uh, <laughs> wish you the work that we have done together. Uh, All right. You can do it again sometime, all right? Yes, yes, yes. And what I might do, in the, if you have time, I might we might mm -hmm. just do, like, when they reach a certain level, like the first draft of their mm -hmm. essay, we can do a consultation. You come, you look at the paper, give them some amount of feedback. OK, um, um, I, I know that some of them are one person not saying anything. Um, they, they would like to contact me. Um, I, I don't mind helping. It's just I don't know how much help I can give. But um, I would probably, I, I know how hard it is to, you know, re review everybody's essay. So maybe we can work on something where I could be available for an hour or two and they could, you know, we could do a Zoom or something. I'm not sure how All that right, would so What I will do, I will organize, <laughs> let me talk to them. Let me bring, yes. them, uh, bring them to a certain, like for mm -hmm. example, I'd love for them to have the introduction and then yes. have their topic sentence with the supporting evidence and sure. their reference list. So, mm -hmm. so they reach quote unquote a milestone and then mm -hmm. we do the consultation because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once, they under, once the evidence is strong and the introduction is okay, mm -hmm. it's just for them mm -hmm. to actually write a body paragraph. So when they write a body paragraph, then we do another round of consultation. And when they have put the entire paper together, then we do mm -hmm. another round of consultation. Okay. Yeah, so we do it in a very org structured, organized way instead of, you know, one, one, one or two students coming. No mm -hmm. number, sir, Kurt, Kurt Tomlin, so we, we don't share our numbers with students. Okay. No, we, we don't share your number, Margaret. Under no, no I didn't I didn't share my number. Yes. I share, I, 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 the, all I ever do is my um, email because that is sort of on public knowledge, not my number. Although, right. you know, it was interesting. Um, nobody had ever, nobody has ever abused it, but I don't do that. It's just a general policy. Okay. I, 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 I share only my Canadian number with the students because I know they won't call. <laughs> anyway, I, if you need me, I'm available. Okay. I do enjoy this. Okay. Okay. All right. Take All care. right. Thank you very much, Margaret. All right. Family yeah, you can help me out. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, man. Oh, I can leave, right? I'll leave. Yes, you can, you okay. can, you can leave. I, I'm just All right, I'm leaving. All right. All right. Um, Roberta, go ahead now. You were you had a question. Okay, sir. So um reference what you were explaining um in the afternoon. Could you um yes. just give us uh, give me if, if if anyone else need clarity, then I would love some clarity on what you were saying, please. Okay, so the college because of the issues we are having with students in terms of plagiarism and academic integrity in tech citation and all of that is a college-wide issue and we have got several reports from even organizations about students not being able to even write a proper paragraph what we have done we have developed a non-credit course relating to apa style so it is self-paced meaning that you do it at your own leisure and you get a badge at the end of the day for my course, what I, I'm, I intend to do is to award, is to give five marks of the essay grade towards the completion of the course. Understand? Okay, sir, so understand. That we're not seeing it though. So could you share your screen and show where we can find it? All right, so I will talk to the, o the, the ODEC persons because I'm not the one. It is something that was sent on behalf of the college. I shared it on behalf of the college. I am not the one that set up the course itself. So I will speak to the, I think they actually sent an email, you know, to say, join the course. Let me just check something because they even, I even got it. I think they sent it to everybody. Um, uh, let me see if I, because I remember seeing something and it says, about course invitation right it's, so the title of it is instructor instructor canvas and it says you are you've been invited to participate in the course information literacy and apa course on your canvas platform right on your canvas platform so you you would have got that email so all you need to do is to click and complete it 
Once you have completed it, you share with me your badge and I give you your five marks. So you have five out of a hundred already. Is that okay, clear now? Yes, sir. All right, any feedback in terms of the guest lecturer? Any feedback? Yes. You're breaking up, so I'm not hearing what you're saying. Her input was Okay. Anybody else? It was refreshing to hear a new voice, um, sir. I take that. I take no offense. No, no, no offense. No offense to that. No offense to that whatsoever. I am troubling you, man. I know. I deliberately wanted you to hear a different voice. You know, sometimes students think that individual lecturers are crusaders of their own worlds. So I wanted you to hear from no, another. No, sir. Colleague. I don't. I don't think so, but. She was clear based on what you were teaching us before. She went in depth and she was very much clearer on it. So, you know, there's a little, un there is understanding there now and moving forward from there. Okay, yeah. And she's very passionate. She would actually, if I invite her next week, she'd come back. I can't tell you. Yes, That's how she is. Not, she's so rough, thank you. <laughs> yes, she, you know, women tend to be very motherly. <laughs> Men sometimes are a little bit, you know, stern. So you need that balance. The yin and the yang, yeah. So you need that balance. There are found her to be to be very informative in her critiquing. Yes. Am I not informative? Are you saying that I'm not informative, Kurt? <laughs> I'm not saying that, but her style of her, her style of critiquing is more subtle. Yours is more aggressive. So, <laughs> All right, so she's Canadian, so Canadians tend to be very, they, <laughs> what, Answer Jamaican. They, what they do is to, they, they, they don't tell you, they, they tell you, you know, but they tell you in a very loving way or a very nice way. It's that very, as you said, subtle. I am very direct, like a Judge Judy. I'm very direct. Do you describe, sir? No, I don't know about the heart. I don't know about the heart. I don't know about the heart. <laughs> No, no, no. You guys have done extremely well. You have, trust me, I'm very impressed with the work that you're doing. So clearly my madness is working. So clearly my madness is working. So because you have done, I was actually very impressed when I saw what was being shared in the fur on, mon, on Monday. Um, I was like, wow. well, I, I never expected them to come that strong, even though it was, you know, it had its own issues. So clearly there's some, there, my madness is working. That's true, sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Earlier, earlier you were saying something to me. I was telling you that I present we present Monday. And so you were being haggish. No, I wasn't because you were not responding. And I have an issue when I call your name and when I call Georgia, it doesn't mean that Georgia is the only person who should respond. Georgia is working with two other persons. Sir, so I, did other person I did respond and so that we present. We, and I hear hear you. You. we could not hear you because you had connectivity issues. Okay, so. And I'm saying when I, let's just say, I say Tana Shea. I don't necessarily call him only Tana Shea. No, Tana Shea is working with two other persons. So the other two persons need to say, okay, sir, we presented or I am the one just or... yes. I stepped away from the computer. That's why. But I said it after that we presented on Monday. You see, I'm confused because now you're saying that and you said you step away from the I'm so I'm not sure at what no, point. No, sir, you said it after. You said you were calling Shanice Plummer. You never got a response. So I said I stepped away. No, no, no. I heard you when you presented. mentioned I, I no man, I heard when you said um and I'm saying to you that if you're having connectivity issues or whatever, just say in the chat, sir, I present, we presented already. And I would have moved on. Yes, Remember that my intention is not to embarrass anybody. No, my intention is to help you. So when you're showing, sharing your screen, it's not just for you, you know, it's for everybody in the class. So persons can say, oh, sir commented on this. That means that let me look back at the work that I have done. So it's not that. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's a learning, it's a learning environment in which one hour notice the style that Margaret does and it's kind of similar to mine but I don't do one hour then the other hour what I do is intermittently where we teach one part and then the other hour is where you take over where you're showing what you have done 
um, you know, showing if you have learned the skill or do, do I need, for example, to go back and say, oh, you know, what, these students, most of the students seem not to have understood what I said here or there. Or, so it's very deliberate. Sometimes I'm not going to tell you that's what I'm doing. But I, as I said, there's a method to my badness. I know I'm miserable and I, I might be harsh. I try to, I'm working on myself in that regard, but trust me, it is on, it, it is, it is, it is, I am well-intentioned. It is no way to disrespect anybody or to make you feel less than, that's not my intention, all right? It's so you know what the first class I felt lost? And it, that's actually a good so, thing, you know. If you even, last, that, even last week, all the classes I had last week, I was like, what am I really doing? Like, where am I? Because you know, I was late. Right. But then when I had the class on Monday, you know, that's where I was, that's where I started to kind of pick up, you know, it's not so bad now. I'm getting right. the understanding. And, yeah, and it's actually good. I tell students that when you're, when you're struggling, you know, it's actually an indication of learning because it means that you clearly are interrogating the information and because you realize that there is a barrier in terms of your, of your understanding, you are learning and that is, I, so I expect you to struggle. I expect you to make errors. I expect all of that. That indicates that learning is taking, is taking place. So I would say to you that don't become, you know, flustered when, I, you know, we can't do this and it's difficult. Trust me, that's a part of learning. When I did my master's, a lot of things I learned, I, my lecturers never taught me. I actually learned it on my own. All right. There's somebody who is new or two persons who are new or not in a group. Yes, sir. Sir, I am still not in a group. That's who? Yes, you to say? yes I wasn't placed in a group. All right, so I'm going to... Add and Leona Williams. Just All right, so Tana Shea and Leona Williams, I'm going to give you a broad and narrow topic, and I will I will guide you um, along the way, okay? Yes, so sir. Know, let me put it in the chat right now. I know exactly what I'm going to give you. And class is over, people. If you want to leave, you can leave, okay? I just wanted to get some feedback in terms of... Thank you, sir. All right, so have a good night. Persons who, it's a broad topic. Let me put the narrow topic. Uh, yes? Sir. Yes. All right. Sir, is it when we have class next week, sir, you can go back um, over what we did, sir, in terms of corrections and stuff? That's what you were doing tonight. No, no sir. <laughs> no, that's what you were doing. That's what Margaret was doing. That's why I asked her to share a screen. There is like um it's two different teaching styles. My kind of um never really get everything that Miss Margaret was saying. Rocky, I thought I was the only one. So I, you I, have I a have different with, teaching um, style and kind of the with her. Right. I'm a so little my, confused with her, sir. I, I so kind of grasp your oh your teacher already. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I broke my broke bad already. So Sir, you have to go say it for me here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Sure. If you yeah. understand me, sir. No, I understand. I understand. All right. So um, what we'll be doing, because you're going to constantly be sharing screen. So especially now that we reach the level, the stage of evidence, what I'm going to do, though, I'm going to pause in terms of the evidence and I'm going to go right back to the foundation now and bring it now to the point where I'm going to teach you how to um, use the learning management systems, um, where you can go to find sources, and all of that, I'm going to teach you how to do in-text citation. So I'm going to bring you full circle all the way to the front. So yeah, don't be worried. That, that, that's because that's the issue that I had. Yes, I had gonna... some of that issues. Like when I was searching, mm -hmm. I had some issues with searching. I actually had to read a lot of stuff. So it was really challenging for me to do that. Because I had to be picking out what I wanted and all of that. So it was really challenging. Oh, okay. Sir, sir, and earlier, sir, I, I heard you said um, something was 5% of our grade. Is it what we're doing now? No, you no. Were mentioning? The, info, in, the info literacy thing that they sent to your email. Oh, I should check my email. All right, yes, sir. yes. All right, so for the, I think it's Leona and, Ta, and Tana Shea. The, let me put your broad topic. So the broad topic is pandemics. Broad topic. Oh. B R O A D. Broad topic is pandemics, and your narrow topic is impact 
no, it's not on, it's impact of the unvaccinated on public health in the Caribbean. Impact of the unvaccinated on public health in the Caribbean. All right. And persons who are here and can assist them in terms of quickly getting to the thesis, that would be helpful. So, so look at the examples. I'm going to post the recording and I'll work with you outside of class in terms of just send me what you have. Send me what you have when you have your question, your thesis and all, just send me and I'll provide feedback to bring you up to speed, all right? Okay, sir. All right. Um, anybody else wants to? If is there anybody who wants to talk to me personally? Because I can. Excuse me. Yes. Sasha and Leon, alone in that group. Yes. For no, you're working as a okay. people because the, all the other persons, no one can go over three. No group can be more than three. So it's either group of threes, or pair, or individual. But I don't want anybody to work individual because it's going to be a little bit challenging. Okay. So Leon, you're in the um. WhatsApp group so I can find your number. Yeah, so please just say hi in WhatsApp group, Leonie, and then she'll be able to find you. Go ahead, Roberto. Yes, yes sir. We have a, a classmate in distress. I think one Miss Shannon Bailey was asking for help. I don't know if she can unmute her mic and talk to you. She was in the chat. She's saying she's not getting the, the work. She's not understanding it or something to that extent. Is she new? All right, so can she speak for herself? So first of all, who are you? Which, yes, sir. Yes, go ahead. Um, as it relates to the APA format mm -hmm. and the research part of, of building up on your topics, I'm mm -hmm. having issue with that. So I don't know if it is that I'm reading too much in it. I don't know if it is that I'm thinking that it is asking for too much. What, um, are you working in a group? Ms. Bader, Sorry about that. So are you I, working a group? I am, that's where I think I'm at. I'm just not getting it, especially the APA and auto site for the site. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. As you were explaining about the mm -hmm. techopedia, um, to source the things, sir, it seems as if when I go on some of the, the sites, I am not certain as to what is real are where I should take stuff from. All right, question, are you working in a group? Yes, sir, I'm in Nikita's group and, and uh, Tariq Fenton. So okay. when, when I do my part of research and stuff like that, I usually send to Nikita or Nikita usually send to me. Okay, all right, so as I said before, what I'm going to do, I'm going to be teaching all of that in terms of where you go to find sources and, and where you go to find sources and all of that. So you will understand. Um, so on Monday, today's Wednesday, right? On Monday, uh, if I'm alive, I'll be teaching you, bringing you all the way from what is academic writing all the way up. As I told you, I'm kind of teaching the course in a very unique way because of when we started. We kind of started in the middle of the semester. So I'm going to do that on Monday. So you will be brought up to speed. All right. Okay, Miss Bailey. Thank you, sir. All right. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Is there anyone who wants to speak to me personally? Because I can open the breakout room. Some sir, um, sir, I want to talk to you, sir. In the breakout room? Yes, sir. Georgia. All right. So let me open the breakout room. And once you go into the breakout room, I'll just come in and talk to you. Um, once you're not remaining, staying back for consultation, you can log out. All right. Sting to Marshall. Come up. Oh, don't destroy. Good night, sir. You yeah, hold on. If you want me to, talk to, you. Talk you want to talk publicly, or you want to, to, for me to go in the breakout room and talk to you. All right, so I've opened the breakout room. So if you can go into the breakout room, I'm going to go into one because I'm seeing one person in one of the breakout rooms. Uh, 
So if you don't want me to talk, if you don't want to talk to me, you can log out, all right? So I'm going to go into the breakout room. Should I just need to, should I just yes? need to get Tanache's, um, Tanache's number? I'm trying to, I'm looking in the chat, but I don't see her number to make contact with her. Just ask for her. her. Just, just, just type her name in the WhatsApp group. She'll answer you. Okay, sir. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Night, sir. Night, night.